2006 AMA Toyota Motocross Championship presented by FMF finds us at Steel City Raceway in Delmont, Pennsylvania for the 19th annual Kawasaki Monster Energy Motocross National, the penultimate round of the 2006 season. Championships already been decided, races are still to be won, and fans are here to enjoy the action. I'm Brian Drebber along with David Pingree, Aaron Bates working trackside for us here and doing her usual fine job. We're very excited about here. The weather conditions have been awful. Things are kind of getting better, and Ricky Carmichael's having a laugh. Yeah, it looks like Davey uh, Millsap's got a new haircut. Looking interesting. Stewart's back in action. Good to have him racing again, and uh, you know, yesterday it poured. Erne uh, Hurricane Ernesto came through the Pittsburgh area and just flooded the place, so Practice was canceled. The women's motocross race was canceled. Uh, everything was put on hold till Sunday. Not canceled, rather. Put on hold till Sunday. Uh, the weather's been a little bit better, but uh, still pretty muddy mess. Well, Carmichael, of course, celebrating his championship there with Roger DeCosta and the whole crew. It uh, did not go without incident after clinching the title in the first moto. Motor number two, he wore that jersey with the number one on the back. Had a little spin out there, but he and James Stewart battled away and, of course, entertained the fans. Uh, Stewart not able to withstand the pressure, though, put on by the seven-time champ. These guys stick with their regular numbers. You know, Ricky runs four, James runs seven, even when they are number one in the class. And it seems like every time they run a number one on their jersey or on their bike, these guys have a big crash. Carmichael keeping that consistent there at Binghamton. Look at this, a 156-point lead over second place Chad Reed in the championship. Yes, he won the title. Yes, he won it going away. But there's something else at stake here this weekend. Here's Aaron Bates. Well, this is it, the last stop of the series within the series known as the Monster Energy Kawasaki Triple Crown. Well, you saw Ricky Carmichael take it last year, and he's looking to do it again here this year. But this year, Monster might be writing not only one check, but two checks to Monster back riders. We're talking, of course, about Ricky Carmichael and Ryan Villapoto. Ricky's looking to take home an additional $30,000 to put into his pocket and also a KX110 pit bike to cruise around in. $30,000 is a lot of money in my pocket, but for Ricky, maybe you never know. Maybe I'll do what he did last year, give it away to charity. Ping, if you had $30,000, what would you do with it? I'd buy ice cream, Aaron. I'd eat it all. Take a look at practice. Pretty muddy, and uh, even though practice was canceled or postponed the, uh, the previous day, they got out here in practice. Uh, well, nobody could escape the mud. And they only had one practice session as James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael uh, doing the best they can to try to make something happen out there. Kevin Windham also uh, muddy enough as Honda pretty good. I don't think anybody was complaining about the one practice session deal. You know, these guys, for the most part, have ridden this track before. Uh, they know what to expect. They know it's going to be muddy, so it's like, let's get out there, ride one session to warm up, and let's get this thing going. Carmichael, six seconds faster than uh, the second quick man, Nick Way, and uh, more than that, faster than everybody else. As we get set to go here for moto number one, James Stewart sporting a uh, pretty colorful orange, uh, yellow, and maroon outfit there to go along with his green Kawasaki. The track here, the Coombs family does a great job prepping the track, and for 19 years they've had races here. It's normally an amazing track. This time of year, not a lot of rain through here, but like I said, with Hurricane Ernesto coming through, it turned it into a muddy, muddy mess. A uh, lot of off-cambers, a lot of hills. That, that makes it very, very slippery. It'll get very rutted, and uh, these guys are going to have to pick their way through those ruts, keep her on two wheels today. Difficult to use the big power that these uh, 450 four-strokes provide here in the motocross class. If you look at our Honda starting lineup, Ricky Carmichael with a fast time there. And then, of course, Kevin Windham. He'll start in second position. Windham out of the championship here, but he started to improve over the course of the last few races here and uh, find his rhythm a little bit. And uh, take a look at all the names uh, participating here. We've got a glimpse of Heath Boss on the number 13 Yamaha there just a few moments ago as the gates are up and getting ready to drop. Carmichael number four, Stewart number seven, the two principal contenders here with Chad Reed out of the championship and out of the series for the remainder of the season. Whole shot, Ricky Carmichael takes it with another quick start on his Nikita Suzuki. Yeah, not exactly a stunner. Ricky is, uh, Ricky's done that quite a bit this year. He's always been great at getting whole shots and, and always being right at the front and starts this moto right up there. Well, it is Carmichael on the number four machine and not James Stewart in second position. They're a good little tight. Ryan Mills uh, fighting for the number two spot behind Carmichael right now as 
the muddy Steel City track has already probably intimidated a few people somewhat, and uh, while others feel much more comfortable out there. Carmichael showed us at Millville that even though he's not classically a mud rider, hey, lap in the field, that's uh, what you call adapting to the circumstances, don't you? Well, he was he was not a good mud rider at all when he first started racing professionally, and he's just worked at it. That's, that's kind of what Ricky does. If there's a weakness in his game plan, he goes to work on it, and, and uh, and he gets it figured out, even starts. Uh, that kid will do, he'll do starts all day long until his clutch is fried if he is going through a, a period where he's not getting good starts. So whatever he needs to work on, he does. James Bubba Stewart running in second position now has moved himself up there. Again, the speed of Carmichael and Stewart eventually shows itself no matter where they get started. So Stewart running in second position and the fourth place battle uh, side by side there. But Ricky Carmichael once again Edging away from everybody except James Stewart, while Ryan Mills holds on to third spot on his number 40 Suzuki. And Mike Brown's right there in fifth. The, the Rockstar Energy Suzuki guys having a great moto. Uh, Mills and Brown both, um, well, been riding the lights class and Supercross. Brownie started in the lights class in the outdoors and uh, just had some bike problems, feeling like he would be a little more confident on the 450. So moved into the motocross class and. They haven't had the best of results. I think they've, they've struggled with uh, sort of the first year blues for that team. But, man, this is a great ride for, for both of these guys, Mills especially, who is from the New York area, used to riding in the mud and, and slimy conditions like this. So he could put in a good ride, and, and Brownie's hanging right in there as well. Michael Byrne running, in, uh, running also along with them there on the number 26 Kawasaki. Factory entry. Here's Brown in fifth on his Rockstar sponsored Suzuki number three. Single-digit numbers. There are only three competitors out there with single-digit numbers. Carmichael Stewart and Mike Brown of the number three. And Michael Byrne is uh, actually, his contract is up with Kawasaki next year. Looks like he will not be returning. There's been some speculation as to where he's going, maybe factory connection Honda uh, to take LaRocco's spot or something like that. But uh, Timmy Ferry is going to be taking Michael Byrne's spot at Kawasaki. So there's going to be some big shakeups here before next season starts. Well, the silly season is in full bloom in virtually every form of motorsports. Uh, the traditional summertime sports, as it gets to the fall months, uh, all the rumors begin to fly. So we'll keep track of many, as many of those as we can for you as we take a look here at the start one more time. We know that Carmichael got the whole shot watching him digging out of that middle position there. Just seemed to get more traction than anybody else made it to turn one before the rest. It seems like most guys line up to the far left if you're sitting on the gate looking up the hill. Uh, but James and Ricky both chose to be maybe 10 gates to the right of that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't know if maybe the, the dirt looked a little better coming out of the gate. It wasn't quite as muddy. Here you see Stewart making the pass in the second. Made that look pretty easy. Yes, indeed. Flying high there, right past the number 40 Ryan Mills. As we take a look down the course right now, there is uh, Mike Byrne on the number 26 Kawasaki. Plate's getting muddied up pretty good here now. There's Kevin Windham working his way up and past Michael Byrne. Gives him a little bump. And that's Josh right. Demuth, who is struggling a little bit, it looks like. Yep, moved over, getting lapped in the early going here. This is about as uh, far away from arena cross as you can get. And Big Demuth. muddy outdoor track. Yep, and Demuth, of course, one of the arena cross stars. K-Dub making that pass on Byrne. And now Burns hanging tough, but once K-Dub gets some open track, he starts to move along. Kevin Windham on the number 14 Honda. You see that big piece of foam on the front of his helmet. And we talked about that in the lights race where these guys run big chunks of foam on top of their visors and helmet and uh, all over the bikes, in front of the radiators, down by the shifter and, and foot controls. That's to keep mud from sticking and packing up in there. This mud is, it's not a soupy mud. It's been sitting now, so it's very, sticky and clumpy and it'll it'll pack on and stick to whatever it hits so uh, these guys put that foam in there to keep the mud from doing that and keep their bikes and helmet lighter davy Millsaps there are beginning to move forward a little bit too not the best of starts for the young rider on the number 118 honda our toyota leaderboard shows everybody where they stack up with david billman rounding up the top eight it's why champions choose suzuki and by Progressive Direct. Don't go under protected. Get a dirt bike insurance quote at progressive.com or call 1 800 Progressive. Monster Energy Kawasaki Steel City National being dominated by 
Ricky Carmichael here in motor number one so far watching Kevin Windham on the number 14 Honda. He has moved away from Michael Byrne after making the pass. Whoa! And tipping right over goes Davey Millsaps. That's going to make a lot of hard work that he did getting moving forward. Uh, for not as he lost at least one position there. We don't know if anybody else got by him while we were zoomed in tight on him. But Millsaps, a little tip over, didn't stall it, kept it going, and continued. You can see Ricky's he's pulled out quite a big lead already. We were hoping maybe James would get up there and, and race with him, make a, make a battle out of it in the mud here, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen so far. Well, the great equalizer hasn't done much to equalize the field here. It has only amplified how much better than everybody else Ricky Carmichael is. Even James Stewart having much more trouble in the muddy conditions here at Steel City than Carmichael, who just went into a whole other world at Millville and looked as though he was riding on a dry track while everybody else was flopping around in the mud. Of course, we caught some flack kind of chuckling over the misfortune of Chad Reed, James Stewart, and some of the other best motocross racers in the world. It just looked like they were part of a comedy act out there. It was so bad. Today, now, this is drying out a little bit. There's no additional rain uh, falling, at least of any great consequence. The skies are still somewhat threatening, but the track is getting better, certainly, than it was yesterday. It's really surprising me that Ricky is able to pull away from James this much. Uh, I mean, James is great in the mud. He won a, a bunch of Supercrosses in the mud earlier this year. He's uh, one Hangtown where it was muddy. He's great in the mud, and, and Ricky seems to be just kind of walking away from him. Well, James seems to have taken it upon himself just to not stick himself in the ground anymore this year, that he knows that the championship is gone. When he can win, he'll try, but when he can, he's just going to go out there, and as, he's, as he has said many times, put on a show for the fans, put on a show for his sponsors, and uh, try to get himself organized for next year. Ricky Carmichael kind of parks it there at the bottom of the hill, waiting for a lap rider, and now I think he's actually chastising the young man in front of him a little bit for not giving him room. Well, you can't blame James for taking a, a conservative approach to the last half of the season. There isn't a championship on the line anymore, and you know he's had some big crashes. It's You can only take so many of those before you start having drool come out of the corners of your mouth and talking with a slur. It's, uh, I think it's Dan Sani there. Yeah, number 86, yes it is. Dan Sani, he's had a, a great season in the 450 motocross class. Put on some great rides, and uh, looks like maybe today he's struggling a bit. Well, he fought with Carmichael just a, a little bit there before Carmichael made his way past. Had to take a conservative way around. Dan Sani riding pretty quickly there, even though he's a lap down. Man, look at this lead. No, no one. Look, it almost looks like he's on the track by himself. Even at that distance, it's difficult to pick up James Stewart, but uh, there he is. All right, I got an idea, Jeff. Yep. Between motos, we see if Carmichael will lop his arm off with a machete. <laughs> <laughs> he can actually just pull on the throttle cable with his teeth when he wants to go faster, and maybe we can have a battle next moto. Well, maybe lopping his arm off would be a bit extreme, but we could uh, make him ride with at least one arm inside of his jersey. How about that? Something. I want to see some racing here. Well, James Stewart doing everything he can to try to find a rhythm and move up to uh, battle with somebody here, but uh, Stewart, even with that landing, showing us that he's having a little bit of difficulty trying to get the power down and timing his landings to get back on the throttle and just, you know, the rhythm, trying to find a rhythm here in, under these conditions uh, is just not happening. No, these guys are amazing. I'm not taking anything away from James or any of the guys behind Ricky. Uh, this track is slimy. It's There's sections you can see where it's real shiny and slick there. It's super slippery. Other sections are tacky. Other sections are gooey. You can see these guys doing that double. Uh, there's not many people doing that jump. I think only a couple guys doubling that all day. Uh, this track is rutted and it's just kind of the worst possible conditions. It's not a, a soupy mud that is sort of light and splashy. It's just this thick, gooey mud that is, is sticky and it'll grab your feet and pull them off the bike. Yeah, I haven't seen anyone else do that double right there all day, so. James putting on a show for the fans, like he says. And Carmichael is leading. Yes, the ruts get really deep, and you can see right there, Ricky stabs his foot in the ground and it twists his foot back. A lot of times when the, when the dirt is soft and sticky like this, it'll grab your ankle and knee and twist it and you can really damage some soft tissue. So you see Ricky here, keep his foot very, very high, right up next to the handlebar. That's the best thing you can do is just keep your foot as high as possible and out of those ruts. Anytime you dab it, uh, you're going to twist something or, or at least potentially have the possibility of doing that. So got to keep the leg up. 
The AMA Toyota Motocross Championship by FMF continues. Uh, Ryan Mill still running in third position on the number 40 machine, working his way through a little bit of traffic there. The number 149, Chris Whitcraft, out of Pickerington, Ohio, hometown of the AMA. Ryan Mills running in third spot, and uh, youngster making making good on the promise that he holds for the future. Well, Mills has a, a lot of talent. This kid's actually won a lights class national moto. It's not like he doesn't have the speed or ability. He's just had you know, some problems getting confidence going, some mechanical problems, uh, just different things. But he's got to be stoked on this. A, a third in the motocross class is uh, it's a big deal. And with the field having kind of spread out and things unlikely to change significantly, Ryan Mills, uh, the youngster on that Suzuki RMZ 450, has a good shot of finishing in third position as we go back to look for some battles on the track here. Back uh, in eighth position there, David Villeman, who was holding on to the number eight spot there, and Nick Way right behind him. Nick was second quick in practice to Carmichael, but yeah, practice and race, two pretty different things. Well, this uh, start is all uphill, so really favors guys with uh, with a lot of horsepower under them, and, and maybe Ricky's bike, some of the other factory guys a little quicker than Nick's, possibly. Or maybe when Nick was sleeping on the gate, not sure, but he didn't get the start he needed to be up front with those guys, and he's working his way. He's got past Villeman, and, and he's headed forward anyway. So now he's up to eighth position, the second quick man in practice, Nick Way, moving forward there on uh, his Honda. 27. And the man who has set the standard by which all others are judged continues to add to the uh, to the cachet of being nominated by many, many people as the greatest of all time. Greatest off-road racer of all time. Ricky Carmichael. Supercross, motocross, donations, you name it, he excels. And James Stewart, well, if he's the heir to that title, he's uh, still got a few things to prove. like being able to finish an entire season. Well, so far, that's been James' biggest problem is that he just uh, he lacks the consistency that Ricky has. He can he can match Ricky's pace and times even best it, but not for 12 or 16 rounds in a row. And that's that's what you've got to do to to be the champion at the end of these series. And um, as, as anyone who's raced against Carmichael knows, he does not make that easy on you. So. Uh, James is still young. He's got plenty of time. He's with Ricky sort of stepping into a part-time schedule, uh, allegedly. Uh, James should have a great chance next year of, of winning his first major title. James Stewart on the number seven Kawasaki, taking that number instead of his traditional number 259. He decided that when a, a single-digit number was available, he'd go for it. And he'll try to establish uh, a new legend around the number seven, as he did around the 259. Ricky Carmichael with uh, a few one-handed salutes here as he makes his way around the final lap. And he will take another moto win here. We have long, long ago stopped trying to count them on the fly, but the number of motocross wins and overall wins that Ricky Carmichael hasn't gotten are a much easier to count. He's just crawling around now, making sure he gets to the finish line. Well, he doesn't want to have to have Goose have to clean the bike off. He just a little light hose, little little hose spray. He'll be ready to go for moto number two. He's kept it nice and clean. And Ricky Carmichael has earned yet another moto win here, and he has repeated as a winner at Steel City. We'll be back. And himself uh, has yet a smile to break out over his face. Winning has become so routine for him that it's all business now. It's, uh, Goose checks the bike, and we check the Suzuki Moto results. Carmichael, Stewart, and Ryan Mills, indeed, hanging on for third spot, just ahead of uh, K-Dub and Michael Byrne. And let's hear from our winners, starting with uh, the young man in third spot. It's been a while since we've seen him up here on the podium. Ryan, congratulations. First off, you've had some moments of brilliance so far this season. You started in the lights division at the beginning. You ended up in the moto division. How are you able to turn it all around? Yeah, you know, it's been a big switch. Uh, Supercross, I was on 250F. The first half of the outdoor season, I was on a 450. Then they switched me back to a 250F, and now I'm finally where I want to be on a 450. You know, the bike's great. My mechanic's working hard. Me and my trainer, Regina, have been, you know, working our asses off. I don't know if I can say that on, on, on TV. But, uh, you know, we've been training hard, and, uh, you know, it's finally paid off. I got a good start, and it's just a great feeling to be back up here. After a weekend off, a 
little bit of recuperation, probably a little bit of downtime. James, you were able to master that second place, but you didn't quite have the same speed that you had at Walsh Eagle. Uh, no, nah, you know, uh, just had a tough week. You know, I um, had a little crash in practice and uh, just a little sore, but man, I'm, I'm having fun. You know, the track's uh, coming along. It's, it's pretty gnarly out there. So, uh, you know, Ricky rode good. You know, I was trying my best out there. I put some good laps in the beginning, uh, made a couple of mistakes in the middle, and uh, about to stay the same at the end. So it was good. Our racer X hole shot went to Ricky Carmichael on the number four, starting alongside James Stewart, but getting the best of him into the into turn number one. Carmichael on the number four also won the race. Making it 129 consecutive podium finishes. Ricky, even though you got this championship wrapped up, do you plan on giving these guys an inch? <laughs> you know what? Hey, we're doing all we can do, and uh, he, and it happens to be enough. I don't want to give it an inch, but uh, man, we've uh, it's tough out there. It's it's hard enough to worry about them, but so I got to worry about my own self. Uh, man, I got an awesome hole shot. I'm I'm super pumped about that. Nobody does more to protect your right to ride than the American Motorcyclist Association. Every racer on the track is an AMA member. How about you? Call 1-800-AMA-JOIN or visit amadirectlink.com. The AMA writes, riding and racing our favorite part. Now, in between the motos, we're going to take a look at a group that's very, very important to the health and well-being of all the racers out here on the track, the Asterisk Mobile Medical Unit. They've got a brand new rig that they're showing off here. And uh, we hung out with Doc Bodner and the crew to find out uh, a little bit more about what these fellas do. You don't want your brakes locked. <laughs> yeah. The Asher's Mobile Medical Center is basically our traveling hospital on wheels here for the for the whole racing circuit, basically Supercross and Motocross. Well, this is our fourth year, and as you can see, we have our nice brand new rig here, so uh, we can provide just about probably 80% of what you can do in an emergency room we can do here on the track. Back when I was a professional, I actually got my pro license in 1982. I mean, let's say for instance, uh, I, I crashed at Axon, Virginia, and I hurt my wrist and my thumb. I, I had to jump in my car, go to the hospital, get an x-ray, try and get back for Saturday practice. Well, that's one of the benefits of the center that is immediate that all the riders understand is if they go down and they hurt something and they're not sure what's what's wrong with them if they take off and go to an emergency room somewhere and you know how it is with emergency rooms you can be there for eight hours before you can get seen and get out we can see them within 15 minutes we can x-ray them you know if it is broken they, we know their day's over and, and they're shot Astros is a extreme athlete company we manufacture high-end materials such as a knee brace but we have a lot of plans to develop and manufacture high-end extreme sports athlete devices for those kind of individuals. Well, welcome to the Astros Mobile Medical Center. Come on in, you can be our patient. It's our main office area, so you can see this is where they first come in and uh, get checked in. Jennifer here, my nurse for the day. She's going to sign you in and take care of all your paperwork and ask you where it hurts. We're really happy, thanks to Astros for all those guys for putting this together. This thing is state of the art. So we already got a patient lined up in here. It's our main, basically, operating suite, so to speak, and uh, got, got his x-ray on the scanner there, and we're all ready to go. We're real proud. We always need ice around here for all those wounds. Riders don't like to ice their legs, but we make them do it, so we've got our own ice machine now. This is our taping area, too. Uh, Eddie Casillas, our master taper and athletic trainer, we can bring, him, you can bring people in the back. We need to put it on the gurney on the backboard or bring them sitting up here to get their tapes done for their ankles, wrists, that type of thing. So one of the funny parts is when you get to a factory rig, you get to look at all their titanium stuff, nuts and bolts. When you come to our rig, you'll see a lot of wrist braces, splints, you know, tape, gauze pads, you name it, we got it all here. Got your band-aids, got to have band-aids. Okay, well, one thing you don't want to have to see at use in here, like you see on TV, it's not a taser, but works the same to get any unruly fans out there. We can take care of them. One of the additions here we've got is this cool game ready system. This is a ice cooling compression system that uh, they're nice enough to donate to us. When a rider comes in, has an injury, and you want to ice down really quick, you can load this full of ice, get a compression and a pump system. So not only does it ice it up, but it squeezes it down and compresses it to kind of squeeze out the, any of the fluid in there. One of the other things that's really classic here is we can go ahead and do x-rays on people. So that's one of the things a rider comes in, they want to know. If it's broken, if it's not, we can get him back out. So here's one of the shots here of a guy we just had. Uh, luckily, this one isn't broken. He had a break higher up on the leg there. Also, we keep our files here of all the riders. You can see this is just one of four drawers. Everybody's in here. So you name it, 
the rider's been here. Up here now we can uh, keep pretty much all our supplies stocked up, lined up all the way down our medical. Tom Carson's got all his knee brace supplies on the other side. We kind of joke this is the Bodner penthouse because I'm about the only one that can stand up here, but it's, it makes it a lot nicer, let me tell you. Well, Tom Carson and uh, Doc Bodner and those guys do a great job. And practice due to the heavy downpour, and they were only allowed one practice today here on Sunday. A lot of things are different here at this track, though. The way they handle those sorts of conditions, they actually roll the dirt to the side so the water folds off to the side because this track is actually based in a bit of a valley. Also, they brought in a whole bunch of sawdust to try to absorb a bit of that moisture as well. As you can see, though, there's still some massive ruts behind me. Some of these guys have said that this track is considered a one-line track, but take a look. There's a whole bunch of different lines behind me. Ping, would you consider this a one-line track? Well, the, the problem is there's only one good line. There's several lines, but half of them you get stuck in, the other half are just slow. So. Uh, not a lot of great lines out there. I, I just feel bad for Erin because she's got mud on her Manolo Blahnik shoes now. Oh, Cry us a river here as our Honda starting lineup reflects the results from moto number one. They'll start uh, in this order or choose gates in this order for moto number two. And who's to think that anyone but Ricky Carmichael is going to get the whole shot again here as he is wedged in between uh, Davy Millsaps and Tim Ferry but instead this time it's James Stewart who comes out with a whole shot apparently and the number seven Kawasaki showing him the way here on lap number one. Well, that's what I'm talking about. We've got a race on our hands now. Where's Carmichael? Well Kevin Windham's in second position and Carmichael I'm going to say third but I get a glimpse of him there on the number four machine. Oh that's Mike Brown on the number three. Suzuki there looking for yellow bikes, but James Stewart out front right now on the number seven Kawasaki, then Wyndham, then Brownie, then Carmichael changed his uniform in between races, and there are three Suzukis up there in the top six or seven bikes. We've got a glance at Carmichael there. He's, boy, seventh, eighth maybe. So it's Stewart, Wyndham, and Mike Brown in that order. Here on moto number two at the start. Still a bit of a traffic jam back there mid pack. Things are taking a while to sort out. So with Stewart out front, Kevin Windham and Ricky Carmichael and everybody else in pursuit. Here comes the number four. Up to sixth place and looking for more. I noticed in the first moto as well, Ricky didn't run any kind of foam on his helmet. You know, your helmet can get very, very heavy if the mud starts sticking to it. The visor will want to drop down. You've got to constantly be, you know, picking your head up and flicking your helmet back. That's uh, that's pretty confident right there. Just not even, just went out, I don't even need it. Figures he's strong enough to hold his head up no matter what happens as he went around the number 38, Jeff DeMint from uh, Texas, also on a Suzuki. Now he's working up alongside the number 220, Mason Phillips, Chino Hills, California rider. Finds himself uh, in the midst of all these superstars. <laughs> we don't see this kind of conditions in Chino Hills, California very often, I can tell you that. So it's still James Stewart, then Kevin Windham. And a big gap back to Mike Brown. Carmichael up to fourth. So Stewart's got a, a whole straightaway on Ricky here. This would be his chance to try to put some ground between them, between the two of them. Got uh, Ricky's got Windham and Mike Brown to get to get by still. Well, he's working on Mike Brown on the number three. Here comes Carmichael down the hill. Mike Brown in the same rut, so he's going to have to find somewhere else to pass him. Works up inside. There it is. Pulls alongside and over the jump. Gives him a little bit of a wave as he goes by. Carmichael ahead of Brown now and up to third. He's heading towards the front in a big hurry here. Wyndham and Stewart uh, won't have to wait long before they'll look out. And here he comes. When Aaron was talking about the, you know, the track being one line, you'll see at least at the beginning of these races, the, the one good line will be on the very inside of the turn. Nobody wants to give up that inside you know, and let someone sneak by him. But as the race wears on, that inside will get so deep Eventually, the guys will have to move out just a little bit or start wide and cut across that inside. 
because that inside rut will get so deep, your pegs are dragging, and it'll actually be slower than if you just went wide and cut across it or just went around it. Carmichael still keeping that, trying to keep that leg up high up out of the rut so he doesn't plant one in there, twist the knee so strong, and yet his timing is so good, he's so flexible that the foot just appears to just kind of bounce right up onto the foot peg when he finishes sticking it out in front of him there near the handlebar. In this kind of conditions also, you know, some of the bigger riders think that they've got a lot, got it a lot tougher. Wyndham, Villeman, guys like that who are lanky, they say their legs, oh! Ouch. Well, all that suspension travel didn't suck up quite all of that bump there. Carmichael had to do a little bit of it with his body and compressed himself all the way down to the gas tank. So taller riders say they have a disadvantage in conditions like this? Well, you can imagine if your bike drops down into a deep rut and you've got this big, long, gangly leg, you've got to find somewhere to put all that thing. Ricky's just got sort of a little nub, kind of like mine. <laughs> you just kind of put it up by the bar and it's out of the way. So short, short statured guys. Uh, they argue have a better uh, have a little bit of an advantage in deep rutted tracks like this one. Carmichael coming up behind Kevin Windham right now, who's running in second position. Our leader is James Stewart. Carmichael following Windham's line and now pulls alongside. He's going to have uh, first look at the next turn here. And on the right hander, he takes the advantage and pulls away. Kevin Windham shuffled back to third position. Carmichael second and heading towards the front. I noticed it looked like Carmichael was running roll-offs. Normally he, he doesn't like to go with those. He'll run tear-offs. He can run up to 14, 21 of those, you know, before he runs out of vision. But he went with roll-offs today. Toyota leaderboard, Stuart Carmichael won two. Next to last race of the season. From here we go to Glen Helen. Championship's already been wrapped up, of course, in the uh, motocross division. James Stewart. Having a little bit of a problem there. Stalled the bike out, tipped over, and that is a fairly big development that we hadn't expected. So now Ricky Carmichael is your new leader, and he did it the easy way with his opponent laying on the ground. That's too bad for James. That, that could have been a great race with these two guys. I, hard to tell how much Ricky was closing on him, but uh, at this point, it doesn't really matter. Now James has got to try to, to pull him back in, which that's a, that's a tough job for anybody. Well, Carmichael's lap times were faster than those of Stewart. He was clearly gaining on everyone else and had passed them. Only Stewart was in front of him, and then a small mistake by the number seven Kawasaki rider. Hands Carmichael the lead. And now Stewart is in second, a more familiar position for him during the course of the last uh, few races here anyway. And in all, virtually all of those cases, except for when Carmichael made a mistake, Stewart stayed behind Ricky. You see Ferry jumping across Byrne right there. Like he almost grabbed his front wheel, but had to shut that line off so Byrne couldn't sneak inside of him. Made the pass stick. 26, Michael Byrne on the Kawasaki. You got to wonder if there's any uh, animosity between these two guys since Tim Ferry will be taking Michael Byrne's job next year. Well, he just took his position on the racetrack. And now Ferry ahead of Byrne. Tom Michael already starting to. Uh, do some of those little signals. Certainly to his mechanics. They have a new mechanics area at the course here at Steel City, and they've done a really nice job. And apparently it's a trend that they're trying, the AMA is trying to continue here to set a designated mechanics area that uh, that is hospitable and workable. Well, the Coombs family noticed there was a, a lot of discrepancy with where the, the mechanics area was at some of these tracks and, and uh, how accessible and you know, to try to make things easier and better on everybody, they, they put up a bunch of easy ups, covered it all. It's in a very, very good spot for the riders and the mechanics as well. And uh, hopefully other tracks will follow suit and uh, sort of try to improve their locations and conditions of the mechanics area. How about Mason Phillips on this number 220 machine? Found himself up in the front, passed by Ricky Carmichael in one of the early laps here. Now he's fighting for a spot with uh, Timmy Ferry. Yeah, this guy got a start, and he's having the ride of his life right now. This is uh, his best ride, certainly, of his career. On the Moto World-sponsored No Fear entry, number 220, Mason Phillips out of Chino Hills, California, riding a Honda. And so far, 
doing a good job of holding off a rider with a much more familiar name, Timmy Ferry, also on a Honda, his Unbound Energy Moto Triple X machine. You see Timmy searching for different lines, but like we talked about, there's one that's there's one line around this track that's the fastest, and you get out of that, and it's tough to go around somebody. Well, he got around him that time because Mason Phillips uh, got a little wild and edgy there, had a little tank slapper going on, things swapping ends, and so Timmy Ferry gets around. Phillips is going to have to try to find his rhythm, see if he can fight back and recapture that spot. But it looks as though Timmy Ferry has pretty much taken off. Here's another look at it. Watch the number 220 bike because he swings a little bit wide there and starts swapping ends. Yeah, he's got his legs out like outriggers. He's just trying to keep her on two wheels. Ferry goes right across the top of him. Sixth position at issue now with Davey Millsaps trying to make up some ground on Michael Byrne. Byrne at age 27, one of the veteran campaigners in the outdoor motocross and supercross series. Millsaps, one of the youngsters in his first season aboard one of the big bikes in the premier class and makes the pass. Millsaps, of course, with a string of podium finishes for a while there. Very impressive, paying off the people that had the good faith in him to put him on the big bike for the factory Honda team. We'll be right back to Steel City after this. Ricky Carmichael working his way through traffic with little or anyone else for company here. Most of the riders uh, politely moving over with the flags that warn them that the leader is coming up. Carmichael winning the first moto, leading the second one after James Stewart got out in front but had a little mistake. And now Carmichael appears to be set to repeat as the winner here at Steel City, winning the event in 2005 and, of course, the championship. If I'm not mistaken, this is the track that Ricky Carmichael rode his first national at 10 years ago. Certainly made some progress since then. Won a couple of races. Good Just for him. Just a couple. Yeah. What did, what did Aaron say? 129 consecutive podium appearances. Now that is a pretty impressive string. Millsaps ahead of Byrne. Or, I'm sorry, that's uh, Timmy Ferry, rather. He passed Byrne earlier. And past, both of them launching past the lap rider. Carmichael in just another zone out there again as he continues to demonstrate speed far in excess of anybody else riding the track today. These motos seem so long when the track is muddy and rutted and slimy like this. I mean, a, a moto, a national moto, 30, 30 minutes plus two laps is a long time when it's perfect racing conditions. When it's like this, it seems longer than a Panic at the Disco song title. <laughs> a, a great deal of energy put out by wrestling these bikes through the mud. And uh, just to, I would imagine just being tense on the bike because, you you know, when you get to a big mud hole, you don't really know how the bike is going to behave or what it's going to do. Well, particularly this, this track is all off camber, uphill, downhill. You never get a chance where you can just relax, even the jumps. You know, normally you can kind of take a breath and, and sort of regroup. Uh, but here, when you do jump something, it's like you got to be looking where you're landing because there's ruts and it's slimy. You, you just, you've got to be focused the entire time or you end up tipping over, kind of like, like we saw James Stewart do. Davey Millsaps chasing Mike Brown. And uh, Ricky Carmichael on his final lap. There are a few other riders on the final lap as well. But he has put most of them a lap down. Many riders a lap down, at least in this one. So Carmichael celebrating uh, with the crowd passed. here at Steel City. <laughs> yeah, somebody just passed him. What is up with that? But uh, he's so busy signaling the crowd and celebrating here, having already won the championship. And now the overall, all he has to do is bring it home. That lapper is so pumped. He's going to go home and brag to everyone. He passed Ricky Carmichael at a national. With uh, Ricky, passed Ricky Carmichael, but Carmichael only had one hand on the bars. He won't uh, add that part. That's technicality. Yep. He will not divulge that detail. Yeah, exactly. Do not let the facts get in the way of a good story. Brown and Millsaps. Brown still holding him off. The great veteran on the number three Suzuki. Millsaps, the youngster on the factory Honda. Right, right to his back wheel now and taking the fourth place spot. Millsaps 
boost to the position. Brown down to fifth. Still a great ride for Mike Brown. Top five. Not much of a chance at a podium position for Millsaps, and he had a string of those going for a while. Ricky Carmichael, it already looks like the cool down lap, but he's still racing, sort of, although not against much of anyone. As the finish line comes in sight, and Carmichael will take that checkered flag and earn yet another overall win. As we look at our Suzuki Moto results, Carmichael Stewart and Kevin Windham holding on for third position ahead of Millsaps and Brown. Let's uh, hear from our winners, our podium finisher, starting with Kevin Windham. Well, keeping it consistent yet again, k it seems that every time you have a weekend off, you come back rejuvenated. What was your secret this weekend? Well, it was a little bit tricky. The first moto, I actually thought I was in third, and then uh, late in the moto, I realized that Mills was in front of me, and uh, he rode really good. He got a good start and was up there and uh, rode strong. But it was really important for me, both motos, to keep Millsaps behind me, and uh, I'm just glad that I could come away with a podium. I felt a lot better there in the second moto, was doing better jump combinations, and I got myself a better start and put myself in a better position early in the moto, so it feels good. I'm just uh, trying to uh, keep the battle going and uh, keep points ahead of Millsaps. Argentine ice overall results. Carmichael with a 1-1. That's pretty hard to beat. And James Stewart also perfect, perfectly runner-up with 2-2 finishes, and let's hear from him. Did he manage to get the whole shot? He managed to make his way around the track, but James had a little bit of a, an upset out there. What ended up going on? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, it's, it's always seems like, you know, I'm just losing the front end or the rear end. You know, I, I, I tried my best. You know, I, um, I didn't ride that good in the beginning, and I uh, started riding better towards the end, but uh, you make those kind of mistakes, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to get back. But uh, I just lost the front end. That was the end of the story. Racer X whole shot went to the number seven Kawasaki, James Stewart, coming out of the field there to take this take the shot. And just ahead of Kevin Windham, while Barry back in seventh position was the eventual winner, on the track, I think. Ricky Carmichael. Folks, As we look at our point standings day, here, an, an incredible lead over second place Kevin Windham, who said he's got to pay attention course, to Davey Millsap. But Ricky Carmichael to continues to be the man to beat, and beat him he did. Well, not quite the start that he had in the first moto, but nonetheless taking the win once again. Ricky, you kind of got a little bit of a gift handed to you, and luckily you're taking that monster triple crown cash home with you. Uh, yeah, no, 30 grand ever help, uh, hurts nobody. Uh, super pumped, man, on the uh, on the weekend, the way it went. Definitely, like you said, I got a gift, but uh, it's always me and him back and forth. You know, I'll fall, he falls. Uh, but it was a good weekend for me. Now, a couple of close moments. I saw you going over the finish, not, pardon me, not over the finish line jump, but over on that corner, a lap rider down right in front of you. That was a pretty close call. Yeah, it was. Uh, he fell down right there uh, over the backside of a jump. I was like, whoa. And uh, I ended up missing him. But uh, it was crazy out there because of all the rain. It was really just like one line, and a lot of guys are having problems today. No problems for Ricky Carmichael on the number four wins again. Yeah, it seems like no matter what kind of conditions or uh, situation you throw at this guy, he's getting better and better. It's hard to imagine that he's talking about retiring while he's still uh, so on top of his game. How much more could you retire while on top than Ricky Carmichael in the sport of Supercross or Motocross? Well, we'll have to see if it really happens. We're always looking forward to the next...